I welcome you all for today's satsang. Sat sang means to be with the truth. When it comes to the question of understanding what is truth, see in the end, in this existence, we cannot analyze the spiritual truth from the languageical truth angle. So when you are trying to analyze the concept of truth from the language, Something is true, something is false, something is right, something is wrong, something is good, something is bad. So, the mind tries to analyze from the background of duality. Actually, in this existence, when it comes to the spiritual dimension of the truth, it's an understanding nothing else exists other than truth. Whatever is there, that is truth. Whatever may be. Life itself is truth. Here, in this life journey, what is there if itself is truth, to what extent it is truth? Let's consider the example. If we are standing on the planet Earth, and if we are seeing the movement of the sun, for us it is appear as true that sun is moving in the sky. It's very natural. It's truth. For a kid who watches the sun in the sky, it's very normal to tell, oh, sun was there, sun was here, sun went there. It's simple. That movement of the sun which appears to the eyes is truth to some extent. Once science developed, once the belief of geocentered existential fact is gone out of the perception as truth from the human mind, since the science developed so that is the universe is not running as geo, means the planet earth as the center. Then came an understanding that Actually, sun is not moving. The planet Earth is revolving around the sun. So now, a different truth is revealed. What Now comes the question, what you consider as truth, what you can perceive through your senses, in this particular case, what you can perceive through the eyes, you are perceiving the movement of the sun, is it not true? And at the same time, what you are perceiving due to the scientific observations, we are all damn sure that sun is not moving. The revolution of the planet around the sun, that is causing the movement of the sun, not the sun itself. Actually, the movement of the planet Earth is creating the concept of movement of the sun. So here, when it comes to the understanding of the spiritual dimension of life, it's not to reject the movement of the sun as something wrong or something false or to trigger an opinion. Let's say for, for example, if some person stands in front of you and tells, oh see the sun is moving. The moment you, oh no, you are ignorant. If you are commenting like that, already a truth has established a faith or a belief system within you. In the end, truth should make you to express the life. It should not trigger more right and wrongs, good and bad, in the sense more fluctuation of the mind. The expression of the mind has a direct link with the duality of the nature perception. In this existence, 
duality is also a truth to some extent the non duality is also a truth what happens when you perceive the duality when you perceive the non duality that is the question that's all the moment if i going to tell no you had to reject this normally what happens if you study the uh, modern indian philosophy presenters normally they do this mistake always you listen to any gurus or any teachers anybody uh, giving any philosophy explanation or answering any questions normally they try to push you from one corner to another corner they try to create this is wrong this is right they try to create a methodology of life you should be like this no life should be all inclusive pure presence life is just life beyond that to condemn something to criticize something to accept something to reject something for that the spiritual journey is not there for what the spiritual journey is there spiritual journey is there to develop the skill of all inclusiveness the more deeper you enter the more outside you should grow most of the time what happens if you see some meditators so called meditators if they are meditating every day they become more and more serious they become more and more sensitive with the interaction with the outside world no actually the most active state is meditation because it's all inclusive state once you are a true meditator it is the growth of all inclusive journey like you are unconditionally accepting life you one common thing what we need to understand is life is not an individual person's program not at all life is a program of all inclusive where you are diving which part you are selecting to dive into it that depends on your own understanding of life where you are finding life where you are finding that completeness if you are diving into all inclusiveness that is non dual it's because non dual is itself means all inclusiveness the when everything is there that makes the completeness that creates the source it's not like that uh, many times what happens i am trying to touch my source i am trying to touch my source i go inside i go inside no then then an imagination you are trying to make about inside and you are rejecting the outside outside is inside inside is outside there is no separation of you at all there is no standing of that iness substitute the iness from oneness the more you trigger i whether you are a meditator whether you are any kind of practitioner if it is triggering the i then you are in a wrong path of spirituality from that separation point of view of triggering i that all inclusive expression of the totality of oneness how you are evolving in life that evolution process even if you witness the whole civilization process is nothing but this evolution process the more humans begin to feel as one the more borders are reduced the more like hatredness out of religion is getting reduced the more culture based differentiating way of looking at life is reduced that is called civilization that is called evolution process it is the by product of development of oneness here even in this hall now many people from different countries are sitting peacefully in india 
Why it is possible? Because the capacity of development of Indian society towards all inclusiveness. This concept was given by Indian philosophy very strongly as Vasudaiva Kutumbam. Kutumbam means family. Vasudaiva Kutumbam means all inclusive one family of the creation. Energetically, when you are aligning your energy to this pure oneness, that is the path of yoga. So, in this session, questions are there and people who are sitting here, you are also can ask questions and people who are watching in different countries online, they can also ask the questions. So, in this dimension of how to develop this state of meditativeness you call, the state of building an ability to live the fullest form of life you call, the state of all inclusiveness you call, the state of Chitta Ritti Nirodha of Patanjali you call, the state of Tadhadrashtu Surupe Avastanam you call, the state of divinity expression you call, by whatever the name you call, it doesn't matter, just the complete form of life as life without any boundaries, without any holdings, without any influence of the imprints, just to experience the life as a life in its purest form. Because questions can be answered in many dimensions. So in today's satsang, the questions we try to take to that dimension where when you are expressing life, that skill is developed. Why Buddha meditated for 14 years before jumping into spreading of spirituality? Because nothing, what is meditation? Meditation is nothing but development of all inclusive capacity. In meditation, for example, people tell you should not have thoughts, thoughts. Why you should not have thoughts? Not having thoughts, what it indicates? See, if you are having thoughts, that very clearly indicates you are trying to make a choice, choice, trying to make a choice in life are trying to say something about life. The moment you are trying to make a choice or the moment you are trying to say something about life, that itself means you are not accepting the present life. The two when you want to accept. Once you sit for meditation, what it indicates? I am contented. I am trying to reflect the completeness possibility of expression through me. Once you are trying to express the totality, then thought begins to come. Means your own individual program begins to run, which substitutes the existential program. See, when individual program substitutes the existential program, is nothing but ego program. So when you are trying to express an ego program, it comes at the cost of actual life program. Actual life program is all inclusive, the basic source. Once life moves in that direction, that is the real richness of life. What is life? See, practically, life means it is not at all materialistically what you gain and materialistically what you lose. Life is the state of the mind what you lived. Even a person in a small hut can be a very happy person. A person sitting in a five-star hotel or a palace may be a very suffering person. It doesn't matter. What matters is, what is the state of the mind? That freedom we all carry. That's why even if you read Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the chapter itself is named as chapter of liberation. Chapter of liberation. That liberation is possibility of each and every living person. We are all born with that freedom. We are all having that inbuilt capacity to express that ultimate truth as truth. Not by compromising through any individual program. So a person is very neat and clean, very neat and clean in the sense, neat and clean, he 
there is a creation program from its angle what is neat and clean where it can reflect by itself it's like a mirror whose mind is mirror no thoughts that is why to have no thoughts you cannot move by any aggression to that you cannot reach there by any firm decision i will not think no you can move to that state only by knowing life only by being able to develop a capacity to express effortless life that's why why we practice posture we practice posture to create the effortless state of the body why we practice pranayama to create the effortless state of the breathing so that you are directly in touch with the life energy around us why we practice meditation is to be in the pure presence so nowhere there is a little scope for any kind of effort are you developing that skill in a very organized way that's all the practice of yoga so in this satsang considering this background the questions will be answered how to meditate how not to meditate in fact <laughs> how to meditate as a possibility in every action life is nothing but a continuous construction towards meditation you take it granted whether you want it or not it doesn't matter life itself is a continuous journey towards meditation you may having that will or not because the true essence of inside is meditative state we all carry that meditative state very naturally each and every step when you walk each and every talk what you are doing each and every action what you are trying to express everything is taking you towards happening of meditation now the question is when it begins to happen is there a very organized methodology how to meditate to say generally how to meditate for that we need to understand some little concepts of life concept of happening some little angle towards actually what is meditation and what's the organizing approach towards that when comes to the point how to meditate one basic thing what we need to understand is meditation is a pure happening is a pure happening in each and every action what you are trying to express outside to what extent you are able to dissolve that i ego if you see the life humans are very strongly programmed very strongly programmed to look at life always from the angle of i always what i get what i lose where i move where i will not move whether i should talk or i should not talk always continuously uninterruptedly you are trying to look at the creation and interact with the creation 
from the background of I, 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 I. When I will practice yoga, I am practicing posture, finish. Even if you are practicing posture, you are not practicing posture. Because the practice of posture is not to develop the concept of I, I am the practitioner, no. That is why when Patanjali explains in the second chapter what is sadhana pada. The first line what he writes about sadhana pada is tapha swa adhyaya ishvara pranidhana. Here ishvara pranidhana means it is nothing but to what extent you are able to accept the total devotional, the divine energy in total what is there to what extent it is acceptable to you. When that total divine energy is get, getting more and more acceptable to you, less and less I, less and less the dissolvement of that ego happens. That is a very good methodology to adopt. Many times it is so silly to see people even when they are talking, very normal thing. How many times the I props up? How many times the ego comes to the face? How many times you have a stand in life? You have a belief in life? In each and every action of life, if you are able to minimize, minimize. Why concept of minimize? Here we can look at this question from another angle also. How to meditate and why to meditate? See, if how to meditate is there, then why to meditate? Why not I walk in the street? Why cannot? Why I can't swim in a ocean? Just enjoy life. Because for the 100% pure absence of I, there should not be any movement. There should not be any movement. As long as the movement is there, so long the I is there. Subtle. You may not have any reason to walk in the street. What I is there, you may tell. What I is there? If I am walking in the street, you, you may need not to buy a vegetable, you may need not to meet a friend, you may need not to do any purpose. But still, when you are walking, it's not a totally 100% free walk. I walks. For example, you have to walk to the right or you walk to the left. You cannot walk upon a tree. You cannot walk into the traffic. That I should be protected. See, Expression of the eye, protection of the eye. You have to protect that eye. Without that eye, nothing is possible. No transformation towards jump into that all inclusiveness. You constantly carry the eye. When you walk, when you talk, the moment you move, eye moves. You are not moving, eye moves. The moment the eye moves, confinement, separation. That's why if you study whole Patanjali Yoga Sutra, even the whole Yoga Sutra can be commented on one concept of this stillness. The whole Yoga Sutra can be unfolded because Yoga Sutra is a very rich resource. It can be unfolded from thousands of angles. Even on one Yoga Sutra, we can write thousands of books. From the angle of stillness, from the angle of meditation, from the angle of prana, each and every sutra goes on answering. Each and every expression is answered in each and every sutra. That is a fantastic way of, that's why it's called sutra, the completeness. When such is the possibility of living life, when, then what I need to explore in life, if 
I had to explore the total freedom. I had to be still. Total freedom means ability to reflect what is. What is is not at all your individual program. What it is is not at all completed by the reflections what you give out of your conditionings of the mind. What is is infinite. What is is immense. What is is divine. What is is totality. What is is all inclusive. It has no boundary. If you wish to reflect that, that is the meditation. That is total freedom. That is liberation. That alignment is possible in stillness. That is why he calls when you are practicing posture, sthira sukha, sthiram sukham, stable and comfort. That's posture. Comfort means what? Comfort is not like I have a fan, I have that. No. Comfort means you don't have any demands. First of all, your body has no demand. No demand means your body has a no demand to move also. It's so free, it's so contented, it don't want anything to add up. That's why Purnamadha, Purnamidham. This is also complete, that is also complete. Are you in a state of expressing that completeness? That is the state of meditation. How to practice meditation means just to reform this in your action. Then comes the question, why I have to live life? That understanding will come. I am living life not to eat some food. I am living life not just to talk with friends. I am living life not to climb a mountain. See, always when I, I have climbed many mountains, always when I look at the mountains, many times what happens if you see a small piece of rock, if a small piece of rock, the whole mountain is repetition of the rock, just no same rock. If there are thousand steps, it's the repetition of one step. Just some, you are thinking, you are moving, you are thinking, you are getting something new, just that tempts you to climb the mountain and that tempts you or builds a concept. I feel free by climbing. I feel free by seeing many things. In fact, it's the repetition of one. The true freedom, the true divinity is within us. That is simplicity. See, why Patanjali give the concept of simplicity? Not because you as a rule that you have to be simple. is not at all for that. You have to be simple to minimize the demands, to minimize the requirements, maximize the presence. That creates a space for expression of the self. What creates the space for expression of the self? That is simplicity. You have to develop the language of simplicity. You have to be simple in speaking, simple in eating, simple in what needed to live life. So once you enter the zone of simplicity, as a product of that, meditation happens. Like this, again, when you come to the arrangement of energies towards meditation, then you have to practice regularly yoga. For arrangement of energies, to build a lifestyle and to have a skill in action. Like this, if you consider initially at least three dimensions of approach in life, you will be putting your step towards construction of life where a meditation begins to happen. It's a pure happening or else you will be imit trying to imitate. Many times I see people try to do meditation. Impossible. It has to happen. If you try to do, you are duping yourself. If you many times people try to meditate by repeating some mantras, by repeating some breathings continuously, it won't work. The more you be gone chanting, 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 it's like a lullaby. Mind sleeps. 
If body is sleeping, it's not a posture practice. Body is very active, very balanced, very presence. Still, presence of the body, presence of life energy to maximum, the presence of the mind, that is meditation, not the absence of the mind. Don't create any lullaby. Don't create any repetitiveness. Don't try to focus on anything. Don't try to concentrate on anything. Because focusing on one thing, concentrating on one thing is nothing but rejection of the others. Without rejecting the other, how you can concentrate on one? How you can select in the name of focus one? Actually, you are trying to express all inclusive state. Mind should not be trained to move towards any particular way. That is not meditation. Meditation is the state of all inclusive, unconditional acceptance state. That peaceful, that depth, that calmness, that divinity, when begins to flow inside of you, just you experience that happening. Then you are the happening. That is meditation. So that's the way you can train yourself as a true seeker of meditation. We see millions of people meditating in this planet, yet they are not can be called a serious meditators in the language of real. You may be serious in sitting. You may be serious in practice of posture. It doesn't matter. You may be, you will be torturing your body. That's it. You will be torturing your mind. You will be torturing your breath. Mm -hmm. Meditation. If you want to experience that happening, it's a very organized way of looking at life, aligning energy, presenting the state of mind with the happenings of the outside world. It's a pure skill of life. That's why Patanjali when he writes in his Sadhana Pada, he brings all the eight limbs. He never mentioned only meditation, only asana or postures. He brings all the eight limbs. He brings yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, the last state of liberation. If you look at yama, niyama and each and every step, everything is valued. Your social interaction is valued. Your health is valued. What is needed for life in the, in the name of simplicity is valued. State of the mind is valued, state of the breath is valued, state of the body is valued. So, eight limbs is nothing but aligning all inclusively, aligning to that completeness, merging to that oneness. That organized methodology is a next step. So, once you are able to enter that door of the true divinity, life takes a different dimension. Life begins to happen in a totally different way. The way you look at the world, the way you look at other person, it completely changes. You feel you in all, all in you. Then you are in a pure state of love. Love is that you, you are seeing. See, now you may be seeing you in only in your partners or only in your kids or only in your parents. That all inclusive state, you in all, all in you. That pure state of life is love. Once you are developing that state of love, that also facilitates for the happening of meditation. Like this, the way you are trying to express life as life in a very rich way. You should be the richest person who contains all, not a poor, rich. A serious posture practitioner may be becoming poor and poor, developing ego, torturing the body. If you are posture practitioner, the first indication is 
how long you can sit still comfortably not even your eyelid should move not even your finger should move just still stillness means it is not a torturing stillness he this body is the product of the mind always matter is the product of the mind even this body is the product of the mind inside how the state of the mind all inclusive acceptance that's why he brings sukham comfort sthiram stability your stability is with comfortness how you are aligning how you are balancing how you are so subtle the more you are contented you become more subtle the more you are in peace you become more subtle so when you are in peaceful when you are in love you will not be aggressive you will not be hard and harsh the more and more you are developing the skills to be subtle skill to be balanced skill to be able to align with the life energy a flowering begins to happen inside towards that flowering how you are preparing that is the meditation so towards that each and every actions that to a wisdom will arise what action i need to do what actions i no need to do that depends on the depth of understanding of life the depth of understanding life construct the simplicity simplicity constructs less movements less actions less movements less actions creates more space for life so it all has a link so by having the understanding of life in this directions a proper way of meditation can be cultured in the end it opens to happen if you are a true practitioner there will never be an injury impossible impossible in my life journey i have guided thousands of people towards practice of postures i have never seen even a single person injured and i have students who can do any complex postures not even a single case of injury show me one of my students injured i am talking and i am announcing openly it's telecasted all over the world even if single person is injured they can post in post that incident on the facebook oh i am injured you vijay you are not telling truth because when you are a proper practitioner there cannot be an injury in the practice of postures why injury happens is the moment you begin to misalign with what is see what is is the truth the misalignment you are doing you have a concept that if my forehead touches the knee i am a good forward bending posture many times it's very astonishing to see and very uh, even a kind of stupidity i can tell people have special back bending classes special forward bending classes is really really not the way of practicing postures in in spite of it you are losing a golden opportunity in life to experience the ultimate truth because what happens when you are practicing postures let's take postures as an example imagine if you are training only to backward bend backward bend backward bend is not at all good your body one thing you need to understand is even though this body is a finished product a finished product in terms of space and time a finished product has to be there for what to express the unfinished infinite timeless product the consciousness this body is 
representing the consciousness. The consciousness is multidimensional, all directional, all directional, multidimensional. That consciousness has taken the shape of the nature which is in your body, that is the body. When consciousness, all directional expression, that dimension, immense dimension, infinite dimension, it has taken the shape of the body. Now the human mind comes, it sees some postings in the Facebook, I had to do that posture, okay, I will force, I will go to a special backward bend class, I will go to a special forward bend class, so that I am a yoga teacher, I can show the proper posture in front of the class. Or I, it's, it's not at all that language, what has to be spoken through this body. This body has to speak the language of that all inclusiveness. If it is all inclusiveness, it has to be expressed in all dimension. It's like a flower. It's not like that. If there is a flower, only, no, no, it has many petals. I will going to flower it in only one direction. Then every petal you are trying to move in one direction. In the end, you will be removing the flower. And the most danger thing is you are losing the opportunity to be a flower. If it is a flower, it has to bloom, it has to blossom in all direction. This body is a, the most beautiful flower possible because it is giving a facility to express the immense possibility. It's a vehicle to express that ultimate freedom that infinite dimension can be experienced. Now you are trying to confine it. Why I am telling this fact is, is not only the constructiveness of the body, what happens when you are practicing only in one direction, like forward or backward or whatever you call. What happens is, if you move, you can make your own testing. You can make your own testing. If you move the body to one direction, breath quality is different. If you move to the other direction, breath quality changes. If you make a forward bend, breath quality changes. If you make a backward bend, breath quality changes. So body is aligned to only one direction. Breath is aligned to only one direction. What about the mind? How the mind is developed? How the mind is constructed? What you experience that leads to the construction of the mind. If you are perceiving only one thing, a particularity, that too directly happening to you, it's a direct experience. It's not like you are looking at a map. See, if you are looking at a map, if somebody is telling about Mysore, see here is a restaurant, if you go there, you get a swimming pool. If that person is explaining you in some other country in the map, it's okay. It's, it has not much effect. But if you are misguided while in Mysore, you are on the street, you want to go to swimming pool, they are showing a wrong direction, then you miss the life journey. In the same way, you are not reading a book, you are not looking at a map, you are working with your own self. It's a too direct. You are in Mysore, you are experiencing the Mysore. You are in your body, you are experiencing the self. In that direct experience state, there should not be any mistake. If you do the mistake, price is high. Since it is a direct experience. Considering this, you should approach your practice. It should be all inclusive valued system. <clears throat> Whether you are a just a posture practitioner to teach some classes or not, it doesn't matter. See, whether you teach a posture or not, why it doesn't matter? Everybody is one or the other posture. Can you tell anybody not practicing posture at any moment of life? Everybody has to be in one or the other posture. No go. No. The moment you are born, you are entering the posture. 
till you die. So why you need to be in only a kind of somebody has to teach you posture. Nobody needs to teach the posture. What need to be teached is how to bring the completeness through the body. How to train that body to align to that divine completeness, that infiniteness. How you facilitate through this body. How you bring the state of Stiram Sukham. And even Patanjali, he continues. Then all the duality is merged. The duality of the form and shape, what you consider as I. How it merges with all infinite forms and shape. That is Sukham. What is Sukham? Sukham means what is comfort. The comfort is you are not feeling the separation of the body. No pain in the leg, no pain in the knee, no pain in the hands, no pain in the shoulders, no pain in the back. Just pure oneness, no separation. Even you are not feeling your body. No feeling of I at the body level. For that expression, you cannot move in only one direction. The more you move in only one direction, the more I grows. The more ego grows. It's very natural. That's what. See, if people live in only their house, they don't know the neighbor. They don't know the people who are living in the next street. See, for lifelong, imagine, I am living only in India, you are living in your, in your countries. What people do? You look at the mindset of the people. Until unless if they are not meditators, they try to condemn other culture, they try to condemn other religion, they reject other people's practices, the way they wear the clothes, the way they speak. Many times it happens, even for the languages, different languages. One person speaks different language, another person speaks another language, they try to fight. Just for the language. Language is for communication. It's person's freedom to communicate in whatever way they want. But that also triggers fight. See the human state of mind. This non-acceptance has to be dissolved. So this acceptance to come, you have to develop your practice in a multi-dimensional, all-inclusive state. How you develop? That is the whole skill. Why you get injured is, you are forcing too much, in one direction. You are forcing. Why? It has to bloom. It has to flower. See, have you seen any flower getting injured out of flowering? Can you show one example? What is the difference between your practice and flowering? Why it has to be different? Why you have that sick, rigid mind? That I had to be like that. Who told you you have to be like that? Because a series is developed. Because in some series, some person has put some photographs and you have to follow that photograph. Or some standard standardization of a yoga practitioner is there in the society so that he has to make such a forward bend, then only he can be a teacher. What you are trying to follow? When no flower gets injured in the process of flowering, why you have to get injured in the process of practice? Because of ignorance, because of conditioning, because of fear, because of target, because of having a strong, unnecessary will to reach somewhere or to prove something. Normally what happens, this attitude I see very much in the western mind. The western, see normally it's very interesting to observe very less Indians get injured in the class. Like when we treat the people who are coming, who are got injured. Many times we get many people coming from different schools telling, complaining they are injured. Very less, you can see in any market outside, very less Indians are injured because it indicates their mind. They don't want to try beyond a limit. You cannot force them. No, no, no. They want to take care of the body. But Western people are not like that. I have to prove something. It's very nice. Of course, that energy is good in the background. But that comparative, that competitive, that attitude to prove something that forces you behind, that is not good. 
an unconditional presence. Your competitiveness should be in Ishwara Pranidhana. Your competitiveness in Tapa. Tapas means no. Competition is what? You may not be competing, competing with the neighbor. See here, people's mind may think, no, no, when I practice, I practice for me. Here, a competitor may not be a person. A personification may be there. Maybe a picture, what is there in your mind about a posture? Maybe an example where you have heard or maybe your own conclusion that tomorrow if I want to teach yoga, I should be like this in a posture. Somewhere a competition you have created inside of you, a competitor, somewhere you want to reach. That has to be stopped. Then a real flowering process starts. You need not to worry about any bullshit of any series. It's all fake. There cannot be a series for postures. That's why we're not even in any classical books, any single name of the posture is mentioned. Even that great Patanjali didn't mention a name of a single posture. Why? It's mainly because not to restrict, not to create an example, not to create any kind of push or pull or target because mind is very precious. Mind is the very precious mainly because in the mind union of consciousness and nature happens. You may have a nicest possible posture expression capacity, nicest body you may have if you don't have proper mind. It doesn't matter what body you have. What matters is state of the mind is very important because state of the mind is the field where consciousness and nature unites with each other. That is the field where the game is happening, the game of life is happening. That has to be constructed to facilitate that game. How you are constructing? By blooming the body, by flowering the body. When you are practicing posture, always consider you are a flower. You are not a person who has to prove something. Of course, you have to develop the skill of posture. For what? Not in reference to a Facebook position, not in reference to a particular series. No. It is in reference to alignment with the existence. I am like this, I am fine. See, everybody is very well balanced when they stand. They can be effortless. They make a little forward bend, they create effort. Oh, the same body. See, the beauty of this practice, if you want to enjoy, the body is like this, effortless. Same body, same flow, everything, same star, same sky, same sun. Everything is same, same. Body is like this, effortless. Little bit like this. Effort starts. Why? Same body, same breath, same sky, same flow. Everything is same, same. Why effort is created? You are trying to move towards the science of alignment. Anybody can be effortless in any position. How you develop that effortlessness? Effortlessness is nothing but how you are flowering yourself. So it is in between effort and effortless, that's it. It's not in between you and the target. If you and the target is there, injury is waiting for you. If you and the effortless is there, find your own range and go on improving that range. Create effort, dissolve effort. Create effort, dissolve effort. It's a game, it's a joy, it's a celebration, it's a playfulness. What you are trying to express in your practice. An effort is happening, I am creating effortless. So like that, while creating effortless, you are enjoying the life. You are celebrating the balance of the body. You are celebrating the stretch of the body. 
So like this, if you are treating you well, it indicates how you are treating yourself. You have to treat yourself well. When you treat yourself well, then only you can treat the self of the others. If you are not treating you well, definitely you will not treat the others well. Always see, see if yourself is not a happy person, how you can spread happiness to the others? It's always like that. What you have, that you are eligible to share. If you have money, you can share money. If you have happiness, you can share happiness. In the same way, if you have that effortless, that flowering, that contentment, that bliss, that calmness, that only you can share with others. Towards that, how progressively you are making journey, if that is the issue, there is no question of getting injured. Not possible. Because constantly you are flowering, flowering, flowering and you are always a flower. It's a continuous journey of a flower to flower to flower to flower. No, that blooming. You are able to make a little bit forward but fine. Stay as a flower. Establish stability. Establish the balance. Establish the well adopted stretch where each and every cell of the body is contributing towards that stretch. When that all inclusive expression comes, it goes on developing. And it's very interesting to observe if you are able to practice in this direction, in a very short time, any complex postures can be practiced. Because it's like aligning. See, if you are swimming, how you will be the best swimmer? You cannot be a best swimmer by expressing the aggressiveness in the water. <laughs> See, the more tightness you hold, the more effort you do. No. How easily you can align. The water extends smoothly, you can float. How you are aligning, you including your fingers, the way you keep the hands, leg, so that just it becomes a very easy, smooth flow with less resistance. Less resistance. Water should give you less resistance. Means you are aligning to water. In the same way, life should give you less resistance because you are perfectly aligned with what is. That what is you are doing through the body. That is the practice of posture. So that is why if you are practicing with the true sense of practice of postures, there is no chance of getting injured. Don't force. Understand. Study the subject of yoga. If you are a real practitioner, there is no question of getting injured. Not possible. <laughs> it can be a, some relaxing method. It can be a little bit facility towards the uh, meditation. And you should take care. As I indicated in the beginning, you should not become a lullaby or a dependence. See, normally what happens, oh, I don't have peace in my mind. I sing some bhajans and close my eyes. I feel peace. Then I go for meditation. One time, two time, okay. But every time it is, then you are addicted to sing the bhajan. And also, as I told, meditation is a pure, all-inclusive state, not only the bhajan. Bhajan is very tiny little part of that immense reality. So that is why this closing the eyes, singing the bhajans, to some extent, soothens the mind. To some extent develop the group energy, to some extent you may be fulfilling the concept of your mind which is thinking I am spending time spiritually. Like this it may be fulfilling some other needs but when it comes to the practical state of meditation, it's not a meditation process. It's just, just an entertainment or a relaxation method or a group activity. Or some, if you are bored, you like singing song, no, like that. That particularly, these margins may be directed a little bit towards losing the egos. See, sometimes what happens? We call dasa sahitya. That's in uh, in Kannada language. It's a local language. 
like this many songs they sing and they move from village to village those songs are to dissolve the ego to they explain the deep philosophies in the normal song so those songs makes you to understand life but it doesn't means when you are sitting for meditation you have to sing it it's about understanding of life to what to what purpose you are doing it so if it is the purpose to meditate silence is the best way because in silence you will develop an all inclusive state every word you speak is a choice see when you are singing a bhajan don't you need a language can somebody show without a language how to sing a bhajan not possible then it is not a bhajan there is no language no the moment the bhajan comes you are selecting a language the moment you are selecting a language you are selecting a particularity the moment you are selecting a particularity you are with one thing when you are with one thing you are missing other in this way you can understand and align for a proper state of pure presence expression so as a preparation in the beginning you can do but once you enter the state of meditation nothing particularity should be as far as possible should not be expressed just pure presence all inclusive state for this stopping off judging and comparison with other people you have to purely understand what is the purpose of life and how you how to what extent you are serious about that purpose it's all comes as a by product of the knowing are trying to express the life let's say for example for example if somebody has a small house and another person has a big house if somebody has ability to do a little forward bend somebody can put their forehead into the knee like this comparison judgments i want to touch my forehead i i want that house now comes the question what is the life intention what's my life my life is the house how big palace i may construct even that palace becomes a dust matter of time even who construct that palace that person will also become a dust reach the dust that is the ultimate truth see always all comparisons and judgments is always in reference of matter and we need to understand matter is not a permanent truth matter is a temporarily moving thing is a pure temporary thing what concept rules now different concepts may rule at a different moment it all depends on what is life for you that understanding see for many people running a restaurant is life from morning till evening they just run the restaurant for some people just taking in participation in some sports is life a clarity should come always the comparisons and judgment comes when there is no clarity about life because they are drawn by different things if you have a very clear cut clarity yes this is life once you have that clarity then you will understand there is no necessary to compare and judge because what life we already have in all of us so what is required in life we already have all of us have that 
what is required in life what is required in life can anybody answer what is required in life life itself nothing else no whatever we do it's only for life that's why a, a famous saying is there in sanskrit which the meaning is for a dying person the most important thing is life you give him anything you tell him he is dying hey i give you palace what he will do with the palace he is dying in one minute you may bring the most delicious food what he wants he wants life that's why life is the most precious thing that we all have that contentment i have the most precious thing i have the most delicious food inside of me that is life then i no need to compare for anything so all this comes as a by product of confident what you have about the understanding of your own life confident in the sense the more and more you are moving towards the ultimate reality the absolute reality the more and more you are able to understand the limitation of the matter outside and its influence the matter itself is not limitation the influence of it is limitation matter itself is a matter it stays as a matter forever whatever it may be if it is a piece of wood it becomes dust it becomes stone it can become anything it it goes on its journey even a single atom lives forever single atom lives forever the effect it causes on you that has to be considered as well like. so now when you are trying to dissolve this comparative attitude in life what need to understand is for what the matter is for what it is and for what life is and how i had to organize my life with the matter around me that state naturally gives the pure state of contentment contentment pure contentment meditation is pure contentment stiram sukham is pure contentment pranayama is pure contentment samadhi is pure contentment yama niyama is pure contentment only so everywhere you are expressing the contentment because you have life life is nothing but contentment i have life it's fine i am ready to live life unconditionally no conditions just life why you need to have some conditionings in life see when you understand the science of comparisons and judgments is coming out of conditionings somewhere you have heard somewhere you have learned something is proper somewhere i had to reach something is good something should be like this it's all mind conditionings what you have within you once you understand yes every comparisons every judgments which is arising within me is due to the conditionings what i have within me so the more and more you are able to dissolve that conditionings outside world you begin to have less comparisons and judgments life should be lived fearless who is having no fear they will not compare and judge fearlessness moment completeness presence that natural state makes you to be a flower in each and every moment you can look from any angle even if you look from the angle of love pure love you love everything you love the incompleteness you love the completeness you love the good performance you love the bad performance you love the winning team you love the losing team you love the born child you love people who died 
you love. When you are pure love, judgments, comparison stops. You love everything. When you love everything, everything is complete. Everything is same. Everything is one. So you look from the angle of love. You look from the angle of fearlessness. You look from the angle of unconditional state of mind expressions. In any angle you take, try to grow out of it. Then you can dissolve the expression of such a kinds of limitations. To understand this question of what are emotions, you should understand the nature of yourself. Emotions are very precious, very precious. what they are representing. Emotions are very precious and what they are representing. Are they representing your egoless state? Or else they are representing your ego state. Ego state can be it can be any kind of identity. See, if you look at the whole human history, people played by just triggering the emotions of people. Emotions of the people are triggered by the name of religion. An identity. I belong to this religion. I belong to this faith. I belong to this country. I belong to this language. I belong to this culture. I belong to a particularity. Whether your emotions are getting generated as a product of a particularity which you have a stock inside of you or your emotions are generated to embrace all. I am emotional in love. I am emotional towards oneness. I am emotional to serve others. I am emotional to accept others. I am emotional to the pain of the others. I am emotional to bring out the pure love, what I have inside of me. That egoless state, that non-particular state, that non-confined state. An emotion which is the result of true, true, true freedom, joy, celebration, happiness. That healthy state of emotion is beautiful. It represents just the real quality of a human. I see people, they are very emotional. They are walking in the street. If some cow is injured, if some dog is injured, they are so loving and they tell, oh, I feel very sorry, I feel crying. And they walk 10 steps ahead, they are sitting in a restaurant, they are eating a fish. They are very kind to a dog, they are very kind to a cow, they are totally unkind to a fish. Why? Fish is very tasty, dog they cannot eat. <laughs> because they call, many times I feel, face this problem when I travel to different countries, people tell, no, 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 fish is a vegetarian, come on. <laughs> it's your own adjustment, no? Creation doesn't function like that. If you are emotional, you are emotional towards your kid, you are emotional to the kid of the neighbor. You take care, you love. You are emotional to the cow, you are emotional to a mosquito also. It's not like that a mosquito is biting, I kill it and throw it. No, you value it. You take care. You are emotional to the other. You are emotional to all inclusive. you. It's not like that I am very aggressive to a cockroach. I am very kind to my baby. Cockroach is also your baby. <laughs> That's what. 
See, whether you like or not, that is a different issue. You no need to hate it. You no need to aggressive on it. That indicates you are not all inclusive state. See, if you don't like a particular thing, particular food, see, how it works is, let's say for example, you went to a restaurant, you are sitting in front of the table, you are a pure organic vegetarian eater. You are pure. And in front of you, a pure non-vegetarian is sitting. And that person is eating. And you are a very proud person sitting and trying to condemn that person. You are organic vegetarian person, not for that. Not to condemn who is eating as per their truth. See, your truth may be organic food. Their truth is non-vegetarian non food. It's their choice of life. You have equal respect with them. It's not a rejection. It's not a condemnation. If you have love, you try to talk to them with smile. You try to, if they ask the advice, and you know they are ready to receive the advice of usefulness of being vegetarian. Because you know, is valuing the other living being on this planet, is valuing the oneness. See, it's all work. Even you may think this body is here, it's sitting here. No, this body is the contribution of the whole creation. If your body is here means the whole creation is behind that. In the whole creation, to what extent you are valuing the all living things? That is the intensity what you need to have towards life. And you have to test your naturality towards it. Naturality. What's your emotions towards it? If you see a carrot, you feel very naturally to bite it. If you see a dog, will you feel naturally to bite it? If you see a fish, will you see naturally to bite it? Can anybody imagine taking a sheep and biting it as a carrot or a beans? We see, we smile because it appears like unimaginable, inhuman. It's mainly because you have to tap your natural emotions, natural emotions, natural feelings, natural way of living. So it all comes as a byproduct of how you are qualitatively building your life using every moment of life. Life is not at all about anything else to what extent you have understood your true self. Even if you study the Greek philosophy, even if you go to the ancient sites of Greeks, the main writing, what they know thyself. That's it, life. To know the self. We don't have any other purpose in life other than knowing the self. How you are organizing your life around it, that is the way of life. Towards that organizing, to know the self, how you are expressing your emotions. That's the way you have to handle your emotions. More than difference, it's a non-comparative thing. It's a, it's a kind of random question. What is the difference between house and a river? <laughs> they are entirely different. <laughs> what is the difference between a star and a monkey? <laughs> it's quite uncomparable, but still people are doing Sports people are doing people are doing the same things. That's why see monkey looks at the star, monkey looks at a fruit. What is the fruit and a star comparison? Like that you have to make in the head. Let's say since many people are 
involved in sports see sports as a different intention sports creates target sports coming as a result of limited understanding expressional mode of attitude i will analyze this sports is a misunderstood expression of limited mode of expressing of life see what is life life means an attempt to expand the experience life is nothing but expanding the experience see if you are climbing a mountain it's very interesting to see they are climbing let's say a very peak maybe 10000 feet they have climbed they climb 10000 feet they are standing and watching here next one stone is there which is half a feet height more they want to step it and again see it have you seen that attitude when they climb they want to reach the peakest possible even half a feet they want to climb that stone and try to look to expand the experience why people want so many varieties of delicious food they want to ex expand the experience of taste people constantly in the name of life they are trying to expand the experience of life through senses because their life is through senses in the same way sports is an attempt to expand the experience here the experience is not of something else is the experience is how far i can throw i can throw how far i can jump how fast i can run how strong i can fight the reference comes to i where i stand to what extent i can expand if somebody can jump here i i can jump up to there see in the end i was used to make a joke in a way of course i made this joke in a sports school if somebody runs 100 meters running now maybe world record may be around 9.83 or 9.63 seconds if that person can run in 9.83 or 63 seconds i can run in 14 seconds let's say. so what <laughs> if he can run just for seconds earlier what he will get so what so simple life see is a society arrangement he is the fastest runner on the planet so what he cannot run as fast as a cheetah see we have made a, a kind of societal a kind of hypnosis a person who runs fast four seconds ahead given a medal and he is declared he gets many advertisement agencies to advertise the shoes everything and he is awarded medals just some facility may come in life that's it but to life what it is it it will not do anything it it will not make any difference what makes the difference is what quality of life you have as life see many times how much torture their body most of the sports persons they suffer with lot of injuries you have to look at their life after 40 45 50 they suffer a lot they lose their life sports if it is for joy for celebration for togetherness for happening of love by being there then okay as an entertainment it is fine is a beautiful invention of humans sports is a very marvelous expression of humans if your intention is that if your intention is 
to explore the deepest possibility of life that is through yoga. If you want to just test, go on never ending testing up to where I can reach, up to where I can run, how far I can jump. And one time when I was training in Goa, I had a marathon runner. She is a world standard marathon. They run like 40, 42 kilometers. And they get a medal and all. When I met her first time, she cannot sit even two minutes. Body is so tight. They cannot sit. They can run for kilometers, for hours. But they cannot sit even for two minutes. What is the use of that life? How, how far you can run? run? And what do you get by running? No matter. People are like that. Today it may be 42 kilometer marathon. Tomorrow it will be 52, 62, 102. They have from 50 meter to 1000 meter or 1000 kilometer also they may do one day. That's how no? they try to expand, 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 expand. How many new games are added in Olympics? When there was no Olympic, it started. So that addition will be happening from the angle of the society competitiveness, target, or that angle. But it depends on what's the intention of your life. It's not a condemn anything or criticize anything. Even sports is a marvelous, as I told, an expression. But what's your intention of life? It's an understanding that sports is an attempt to expand the adventure or possibility of the self. No? It's an exploring the expression of the possibility of the self regarding the matter. Because what happens? Physical forces tries to pull you back. See, if you are jumping, you have to come back to the ground. If you know that you will never come back, you will never jump. <laughs> you know? Then how far I can jump? Gravity pull. So like this, physical forces restricts you. You want to break that restriction. Sports is an attempt to break the restriction. Nothing else. Restriction put to yourself. Yoga is an attempt to break the restriction of what you have built in the not only this life. It's not the restriction of how far you can jump. It's the restriction of millions of life. Restriction of the whole creation. is the expression of the true self which includes all which has an infinite possibility. That is the state of Samadhi. To this state, how you can bring that infinite possibility? That is the practice of yoga. Even though we are forced to compare them due to the society conditionings, actually they are uncomparable. Sports as just a little tiny part of life expression whereas yoga is a journey towards totality of life possibility expression. I thank you all for bringing this opportunity to serve the divinity in you all. Happy life, happy time.